All right, the supplements and biohacks that saved my life. Um, little dramatic um, title, but pretty true. Um, so let me cover, I'm gonna be spastic about this. I've been trying to make this video forever. Um, there's so much information I'm trying to, I wanna share and put out there, um, but I procrastinate and perfectionist and it's never gonna be good enough. So I'm just gonna do this shitty and at least it's out there. Um, so why am I making this video? Um, not to sound morbid, but uh, I could die at any time. Um, I don't think I'm dying, I hope not. Um, but that's kind of life is just, you really just don't know when the life, when kind of the ride is over. And there's information that I really wanna share that's helped me tremendously. Um, honestly, as weird as it sounds, there's stuff that I wanna kind of leave for my kids. Um, I plan on doing a lot more videos. I'm building a website. Um, I'm going to start doing podcasts. There's a lot of information I'm going to start putting out. Um, but in case I don't make it to that point, I'm going to at least make this video. <laughs> That's fucking nuts. Um, but yeah, so a little bit of background about me, um, and kind of what led me down this biohacking, you know, journey is I really didn't have a choice. Um, you know, I grew up, I was diagnosed ADD, ADHD when I was young. Um, obviously when I'm young, I didn't really notice that anything was off. You know, they diagnosed me, they put me on medication for a couple of years. Um, I chose not to take medication. I don't remember why. I only took it maybe a couple of years when I was young. Um, uh, middle school, I just stopped taking it. Um, and I was able to go through school. I didn't, you know, it really wasn't that bad. Kind of the, the biggest struggles growing up was in just, you know, general anxiety. I had really bad social anxiety. Um, I've always been able to kind of pick up on people's energies as weird as that sounds I can kind of sense someone's mood really quickly So I'm just very sensitive and kind of overly in tune with people So I was just very self-aware and you know that led to just social anxiety But I was able to deal with it. You know, I had friends like I went out like it didn't really hold me back but um, Obviously that led into issues with alcohol where alcohol kind of you know relaxed me enough to just feel comfortable um, but again, I really didn't have health issues or, or struggles, um, until much later in life. Um, you know, alcohol was always a part of my life, you know, binge drinking, but, um, I would never went off the rails with it, never got hard into drugs, but it's just, you know, the way my brain, my body's built, like it just, all that, you know, kind of accumulated over the years and it kind of blew up in my face, you know, probably late twenties is where I started to run into issues you know, early twenties, um, probably gut problems. I had, you know, I always had, you know, really bad brain fog. Never, never understood why. Um, you know, early twenties, I, I think it was mid twenties. I, I finally linked it to, um, it finally clicked where it was like certain foods were creating issues where it was like, you know, I grew up playing sports and, you know, football was, I was in love with football. So I was just whey protein supplements nonstop. Um, for years and years and years, you know, probably eight years of just whey protein and just all these protein stuff trying to bulk up. Um, and mid twenties, I think, I don't know when the light bulb finally went on, but finally connected that, you know, after I had my whey protein or, or my supplement in the morning, um, that's when the brain fog, you know, kind of kicked in. And that's when I just felt like a little bit out of it and anxious. And I know it sounds weird, but just whey protein. And it was like, okay, I'm like, damn, I'm like, okay, whey protein's doing this. I'm like, what else? And I started to tweak, I started to biohack before I guess it was biohacking. Just, I experimented with different diets, trying to find what worked. And, you know, I was already studying exercise physiology. I, I was always interested in how things worked. I've always had kind of an engineer's mind, you know, problem solving. I just love that stuff. Um, and I was just fascinated on how to manipulate, you know, biology, you know, neurochemistry to kind of achieve high levels of, you know, performance. Um, so what, so I started to research, I started to play around different diets and, you know, I'm reading China study and I'm getting sucked into vegans, like veganism didn't work. I mean, that felt like crap. So vegan didn't work for me. Um, and I heard about paleo and, you know, paleo sounded crazy. I'm like, that's heart disease. Cause I was studying nutrition in college and stuff. And I was like, can't eat that. It's, it's terrible. But, um, that was kind of the first, the first thing that clicked was paleo. When I finally read the book, I was like, this makes sense. Like logical, like let's eat like our ancestors and 
okay, I kind of looked into the saturated fat and all the myths and stuff, and it seemed like there was a lot of misinformation and, and studies. I don't really want to go down that rabbit hole, but whatever. Paleo worked for me. I felt great. You know, all of a sudden, brain fog was lifting, you know, mood, uh, the anxiety was even less. Than the, that was like, that was fantastic. Um, but throughout this whole time, I'm still, I'm, I'm binge drinking. Binge drinking has been like, that was a part of my life for a long time. It was just maybe once, twice a week where it was just like, that was just my norm. I partied, I partied all through college and that was just, you know, a couple times a week, we just drank hard. It was just kind of what I did. And then the rest of the time I tried to be super healthy and like offset it. And it's like that formula worked for a long time. Whereas like I got the diet, I started to get the diet better. You know, I was really going above and beyond, like trying to dial my health, but I was still binge drinking. And then you pile in stress. I mean, chronic stress started to become a problem. Um, you know, once I started to work and financial, you know, I wasn't in bad financial situation, but I just, I just kind of hyper focus on things that are not right. And, you know, for some reason with ADHD, I'm not, I've never been really good with discipline. So I wasn't reckless with money, but I spent, you know, I YOLO'd a lot. So it was like, I built up debt in college. I didn't, you know, I paid my way through college. I didn't have any, you know, kind of support on that end. Nothing against my parents, but yeah, I'm going to try not to make this video is going to be really freaking long, but like I said, I'm trying to, I'm trying to lay the, the groundwork and stuff that's actually going to help people. Cause I know there's so much information that I've come across on YouTube from other people that have, you know, helped me along my journey. That's made a difference. And it's like, maybe I can explain it in a different way that clicks with, with someone where it's like, you know, I've listened to, you know, some people talk about 15 different things. And it was like that one person that clicked. But as you see, my ADD kicks and I'm all over the place. But 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 um, yeah. So, like I said, so ADD, yeah. So health issues, um, late 20s, blew up in my face. Um, I I went through this period of, of like chronic stress because I almost lost my license, which wasn't DUI. It was nothing alcohol related. It was just too many traffic violations. So almost lost my license. I drive for work a lot. So all of a sudden, you know, I got kids, I got a family, so I'm stressed out all the time. Didn't realize it that, you know, to the point where I really went to the ER one time, I thought I was having a heart attack and it was, they're like, no, they're like, that's just, that's just anxiety and stress. And it was like, it had become such my norm that I didn't even, I didn't even register how stressed I was. Um, but I didn't feel depressed. I wasn't depressed or anything. Um, you know, I was sleeping okay then, but it was just so weird that, um, it was just, one night like five years ago well i do know the reason well i was messing around with keto i've tried a lot of different stuff and i don't know why this sounds nuts keto makes me feel like i'm like manic like my my mind starts to race like um i get anxious and i can't sleep and i've read that i've read that other people go through this issue so i'm not completely crazy but it just puts me in hyperdrive and it's like i know i got a weird brain so it's like it just it tricks the wrong thing. So it was a combination of chronic stress and it was whatever keto does to me that kind of that puts me into this overdrive. And it was just like this one night where I was just like, all right, I'm, I think there's a guy staring at me talking. <laughs> but one night, um, I was just like in my head, it was just like this random thought. I'm like, oh my God, like what if I, what if I don't sleep tonight? And it was just like, it triggered a fucking panic attack and like this horrible like dread anxiety and it was just like, oh, it was like a self-fulfilling prophecy where it's like, I didn't sleep that night. I will, the next day I felt absolutely wrecked. It was just like, I was depressed. I felt like my world had been flipped upside down and it was just, my thoughts were just running like endlessly. It was just like, oh my God, what if I don't sleep again? Like, what if I can't sleep? What if this gets worse? And in the back of my head, I knew like, I'm like, I'm going to go down a deep, bad hole. I'm like, I'm going to be so depressed. I'm like, if I can't sleep, if I'm just in this constant state of panic, or it's just like, it hurts your body. And it's like, your mind is just going bouncing off the walls. And it's just like, you feel trapped. It was fucking horrible. But yeah, so that turned into a fiasco shit show. It was just like, life went from not so bad to all of a sudden flipped upside down. And the world looked scary where it was just like, I was in constant fight or flight. I was stuck in panic and it was a fucking nightmare. Um, and every day I'm just like, it was just, it was surreal. I'm like, how did this happen? I'm like, what did I do? Like, I started questioning, like if I'd done something like immoral in my life or like God was punishing me, it was just like, it was nuts. Um, but so here's, here's the first lesson where I really messed up is because I was, you know, prior to this, like I'd really gone into like naturopathic medicine, like natural routes. Like I was hardcore paleo, like 
that lifestyle, like anti-medicine, the works. And the other factor is my mom was bipolar. So I watched her bounce medications and, you know, I had a really, really bad association with what psych psychiatric medications would do to you. Um, so, and I read some books for about like sleep hygiene. As soon as this happened, I started to do my engineer research thing. I tried to solve the fucking problem. And everything I read was, it was do not take sleep meds, do not take anxiety medication. It's going to ruin your life. So it was like day one that got drilled into my head and I'm like, I will not take anything. I don't think I took over the counter, you know, like sleeping shit. And I didn't sleep for four nights straight. The first, the first bout of it. And by the fourth night, like I, I was fucked. Like I was a bad, bad headspace. Um, and somehow, I don't know, I found, I kept finding little tools that kind of kept me pushing, which is what I do. I'm like, you know what? This might be the thing. This is going to fix it. This is going to fix my sleep. So it kept me, kept me going where I think it was like the fifth night I slept okay. And I was like, and I thought I was like out of the storm, but it was like the next night, boom, insomnia, right back into panic and just dread and fucking horror. And it was, it was, I'm going to speed it up. It was, a, it was a two month cycle into hell where I just, my sleep was wrecked. I was wrecked. I lost weight. I became horribly depressed. You know, I didn't recognize the person I was anymore. I was just, I, I reached my breaking point. Like I couldn't, I couldn't go on. Um, yeah, it's a terrible place to be. I'm not going to keep going deeper into that one. Um, but yeah, so my mistake here, the moral of what is, is useful in this is, uh, is there's a time and a place for medication for, for shit's sake. I almost killed myself. Like not, well, I ended up in, no, I'm going to delete that part, but yeah, literally it was, uh, it was not good. Um, I guess I'll leave whatever. I, I ended up in a hospital because I drank a lot of alcohol cause I hit my breaking point, but yeah, it, yeah, that's not my uh, proudest moment. But like I said, I, I broke, I just, I couldn't go on. I didn't think anything would help in the week that I kind of hit my breaking point. I was calling around doctors, trying to get help, trying to see a psychiatrist. And it was just like, nobody could get me in. I hadn't talked to anybody about this. So I've been hiding this from everybody. I'm dying on the inside. I didn't tell anybody about it, which is again, a big stupid mistake on my, my part, pride and ego. I'm like, I can fix this again, my fault. Um, but yeah, I ended up in a hospital for 10 days and thank God they put me there because I still didn't sleep. They put me in there. Um, they told me it was bipolar. You know, I was in, I was manic, but it's like, first of all, my mom was, I watched manic. I knew what manic was like. I have anxiety, like my anxiety kicked and when it kicks, I can't get out of it. it. Doesn't matter. And this was the first time I'd ever gone to that extreme where I just it would not calm down. Um, but yeah, so they put me on a bunch of bipolar medications in the hospital. Um, which I know this is fucking crazy, but yeah. So I didn't sleep for three nights in there. And I was just, this guy was just losing my mind. It's terrible, but I don't want to, I don't want to drag anybody down that hole, but, um, people were coming and visiting me and you know, I, I can't say whatever they put, put me on didn't help. Um, but it was like the fourth or fifth night. Some friends came and came and visited me. You know, it was like, we were talking, it was weird. Cause we were talking about sleep and it just kind of dawned on me. Like I'd like, I had like this OCD with thing when like the insomnia hit, like I start to like overthink sleep. Whereas it's like, I couldn't sleep. So I started to like, really like, I tried like all these different, I read all these different books. I'm trying to meditate and like, just like force sleep. And it just dawned on me, it clicked when they were talking about it. Where it was just like thinking back in my life. I'm like, I never had a problem sleeping. Like I'd watch TV at bed and it just, I'd get tired and I'd go to bed. And that was just like it. But for whatever reason, it clicked. And the medicine they gave me that night, which was, I'll share it was mirtazapine which is like antidepressant, but low dose, it like knocks you out. But so it was like fourth or fifth night, like I slept and it was like, holy shit. It was like, literally I hadn't slept right in, in two months. And as soon as I slept and I woke up, like I literally ran down the hall, like a, like a crazy person. And I was like, holy shit, I slept. Um, and uh, it was like, I think I slept till like four or five o'clock, but it was like, at that moment, it was like the, the tide turned. I was like, okay, I'm like, I was wrong. There is something that can help me sleep. So from there, it was like, okay, it, very slowly, I started to believe that I could rebuild my life because my life was shattered. I was a shattered person. Like I didn't recognize myself. Like I just, I had broken. And it was like, I had a one-year-old at the time. Like my wife is coming to see me. And it was just like, oh, crushing, just crushing to like, think about that. I almost left them and just like, yeah, it's fucking mess. But anywho, um, so 
yeah so i spent 10 days in there and i'm honestly i'm glad i did it was like it it's what i needed and i had to learn the freaking hard lesson that dude there's a time to take the medication like you don't have to be stuck on it forever but if you're freaking breaking and you can't go on like you just find something to like live for another day um and that's my that was my mistake you know i, I messed up um as soon as i got out i it didn't want to stay on medication so i started to go off of pretty much everything they gave me like all like the bipolar stuff um which was like mood stabilizers like lithium all this all this crap like i felt terrible um and i kept using the mirtazapine to sleep and it was it was just enough where it's like man that thing would just it would ko me i woke up feeling terrible i felt like i got hit by by a ton of bricks but you know nothing's worse than staying up all night wishing you were sleeping mine's racing you know i'm sure i'm hoping i'm not triggering anything for anybody but hopefully uh i'm gonna share some tools that are gonna help you but so thanks to my insanely stubborn nature i started to you know try to come off of the medications and just very very slowly went back to my biohacking kind of engineered reverse reverse engineering ways and start to experiment just try to find the things that that slowly rebuilt my life and um ultimately it was klonopin i know so it's a benzodiazepine i can't warn people enough about these these medications i end up getting stuck on this medication it is it is nasty shit. If you take it daily, you're you can end up in a bad place. But there is a time and a place for it, and it probably it was the next tool that again helped me fuck help me transition it and continue to recover. Because it was the first thing that was like boom. It was like when I took that, I felt normal. Because that's how bad my anxiety was. I was in such a fight or flight state. Like taking a benzodiazepine brought me back to normal, and all of a sudden I didn't feel like I was scared. Like my body was just freaking out at everything and all of a sudden i could it could sleep and it was just like holy shit because in my brain i'm like i'm like i'm like i'm just wired wrong i'm like I, my brain is so strong that i just nothing works on me whereas like that's what i believed and time and time again it just it did you know not sleep and proved it right um so this was the first thing i was like holy shit i'm like i just i'm not anxious but that shit is dangerous because it's i mean if you would deal with anxiety chronically and all of a sudden you find something like that you're going to be taking it daily and it's like it man it just it, it starts to backfire quickly so i can't warn people enough it is a tool you use it as a tool if you use it daily you got to understand the risk and what road you can go down um because like i say after a couple years of being very i knew to be very careful with it i used it as infrequently as possible initially i was very smart with it um and it was a and it helped me recover my life but when i started to do dumb shit and I started to abuse it, that's when I got stuck and that's when I went down another fucking rabbit hole in the second hardest time in my life. This video is gonna be long, holy shit. Um, whatever. <clears throat> um, okay, so yeah, so the Klonopin thing, so like I say, fast forward the, the story part where, you know, I got, I found some more tools that helped me. Um, I came across, oh man, I just, I'm sharing the worst stuff right now, but uh, Kratom, Kratom is another highly addictive, you know, it's a, it's pretty much a natural amphetamine in an opiate. Now it's herbal, it's natural, this is a plant, but it's still, it's still something you take daily, you're in trouble with it. But when these tools are used very sparingly, very cautiously, they can help people. Now I've been, I've been chastised and roasted by some people in, a, you know, the big group I, I run. Um, saying how dangerous Kratom is and I 100% agree like you got to be careful with this shit like I know it gets people off of heroin and it can work wonders for people that are addicted to pills um, but you can create a freaking mess with this stuff but when you're horribly depressed and you have no energy this would give me a break you know it give me the peace of mind of like seeing like holy shit like there's something that actually, actually I can feel good with and it's like all those kind of depressed stories that are playing in your head all of a sudden, it's like when you feel good, they kind of disappear. And it's like, you know what? Maybe I can do this, I can do that. And you can kind of like see like, you know what? Maybe those depressed stories are bullshit. So Kratom helped me at least see, you know, what life would look like or what how how things could be if I felt good. Now it's it's a drug, you know, it's chemical. It's, this is chemically induced. Obviously we, we want our brains to do that naturally. Um, 
But like I said, you just got to gauge your situation where it's like, if you feel fucking, if you feel horrible every day and I had to work, you know, I got out of the hospital, I went right back to work. I spent 10 days in the hospital and I worked and I was horribly depressed and I, I'm not going to, I don't want to air my shit. Like I'm airing my shit here because I think it'll help someone, but I didn't talk to anybody about it. You know, my wife knew because she's like, if you ever, she's like, I'm going to freaking leave you if you ever don't tell me what's going on again. And I'm like, I agree. I'm like, I'm an asshole, like whatever. Um, but yeah, I lost my train of thought. But yeah, creative, dangerous. Um, yeah, so recovery. So yeah, I'm spacing out. But okay, creative. Yeah, so careful with creative. Um, but like I said, so I got myself back into a mess. I'm going to kind of speed this. I keep saying speed it up. But I'm going to at least get it close to present day where I'm actually going to give you guys useful information. Um but like I say, it kind of, at least I can give you some warnings of like, just don't do what I've done because it sucks. Um, like I said, so alcohol has always been a problem. It's, um, and that snuck back in. As soon as I started to feel a little bit better, you know, the Kratom helped, like the Benzo helped. And I started to rebuild and I was like, you know what? Like life started to, you know, kind of come back together. And I started to do the things that I enjoyed doing again, which unfortunately was drinking. And I unfortunately figured out that, um, I don't even, I shouldn't even tell you, but benzodiazepine helped with, I mean, I know other people have done this shit where it's like, it'll cut, it'll significantly reduce a hangover. If you have a nasty hangover, it cuts it. But Klonopin has like, it's like a, fuck, it's like a four or five day half-life. So that it's in your system for like eight days. Like it takes weeks to clear your system. So it is really, it is, man, you are playing with fire and I playing with fire. And that's what I did, you know, for a couple of years, I was just very careful and I got away with it. You know, and I kept I kept working, finding other supplements and working on my health, and still doing really dumb things. Um, and then it was, shit, it was last year. It was 2020, fall of 2020, when I realized that uh, I'd been taking taking too much clomp and drinking too much during the summer. Summer, I feel good. Um, end of summer, I'm like, okay, I've been doing this a little bit too much. I need to stop. And it happened before. Like I could feel like I was having some withdrawals and it was, it was hard, but I always got through it. And this time when I, I tried stopping, it was like, I stopped sleeping completely. And I'm like, oh, uh, I'm like, okay. And then I'd like have to take a little dose and I try to stop again. And it was the same thing where it was just like, inside me, like I, that summer, like just probably wasn't paying attention, just being an idiot, think I could get away with it. And I got myself hooked, like, physically hooked on it like I didn't want to be taking it like I knew it was dangerous or it wasn't like I was craving it it was just like it was a tool that I abused um and so like I spent month and a half month freaking out because I knew I'd read the stories about how horrible it was to try to come off this stuff and I just kept trying to cold turkey off it you know um and eventually it was like I'm like I'm stuck on this and I had to and I had to start a very you know a micro taper they call it um, and that was, that was not fun. Uh, so I started the taper and I've made, I made posts about like the benzodiazepine stuff. Um, <clears throat> I had to start my taper at 1.5 milligrams because at that point, you know, I didn't, 1.5 was like high for me. And at that point, like I had, I was already so stressed out and my butt stressed my body out from, you know, continued. I kept trying to cut it out and I kept like having to go back and it was just like throwing my body for a loop doing this shit. So I finally was like, all right, I'm like, I got to start a micro, I'm like, I got to start a taper. And with benzos, like you have to do an extremely slow taper. Um, you can look up Ashton protocol. She's kind of like the gold standard that the community goes by. And um, you, you cut 10% of your current dose every one to two weeks, just based on how you feel. So it's, it's a process. Um, so I started at 1.5 milligrams and you know, it was like, okay, things evened out. Like I started there and I started to cut quickly. And then it was, I uh, don't want to go down that one. I've shared that, but that was seven, seven months. And talk about an emotional roller coaster, like mood swings, horribly depressed one day, like rebound anxiety, insomnia. It was just like, it's just a, a nasty, nasty roller coaster dealing, dealing with coming off that stuff. And it was like, your body gets so, so addicted to it. When you try to come off it, I mean, you can seizure and die. If people take too much, if you've been taking a, a good dose for a long period of time and you try to stop you can seizure and die like that's that's kind of the level and people people have come off heroin said that that's easier than this so it's like i really fucked up and i got myself in a mess with it um and that's 
what really challenged me. You know, I found good tools along the way. And then when it came to coming off this stuff, I was just like, I'm not spending my life stuck on this stuff. I'm like, there's no fucking way. Like, you know, and the other thing was this stuff is like, don't go in those, those support groups because it's just filled with people that are drowning and they'll pull you down. And all you're going to hear is these horror stories. And it was like, nobody is helpful. No one, these people don't, aren't trying shit. They're telling you not to take supplements. And it was like the dumbest thing. I, I took so many supplements, anything I thought that could help. But it was like, go to the nootropic groups, go to biohacking groups, like go to Reddit, find people. Like I had to do crazy shit to, to break the addiction. Like if you just try to do it without supplements, like, man, I respect anybody who can do it, but I, I had to do a lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, that, okay. So that gets it to the point where I can at least, I'm just going to start listing off all the things that I found most that have been most beneficial and most powerful, um, in my healing journey. And that's, you know, for someone with that's ADHD, um, you know, as you can see, kind of spastic, like I got some weird, I got some ticks, like maybe a little bit OCD dashed in there. I don't know. You can't classify me. Um, but I don't take any medications now. I have, you know, I've, I've messed up with the benzos. I've had to, I've gone off and on. And it was like, it's always alcohol related. Um, but I can manage without medications. I managed, you know, 30, 31 years of my life without medication. Whereas like, I knew that my normal was not this roller coaster shit show. Um, so I've always believed that, okay, I could heal the damage and, you know, I'm going to go off on a tangent, but I had, I played football. So there's traumatic brain injuries. There's, you know, mixed with alcohol mixed with, you know, I didn't really go hard with drugs, but you know, a very unhealthy lifestyle, not hard to say that, okay, there's parts of my brain that didn't work great with ADD. And then I, you know, used my head like a battering ram and, and binge drank. So, uh, not surprising that <laughs> shit went off the rails. Okay. So the most powerful thing, the things that changed my life, um, obviously medic, there's medication. There's a time and a place. Um, I took a mood stabilizer was like my emergency backup for depression initially. And it, it helped. I only used it literally. I didn't even, they told me how I was using it. wasn't even useful. They told me I had to taper up. I would use it. I'd only use one or two doses and I just felt the difference. Like I'm very sensitive to things. Um, but I never had to take it for long. I never had to take a, never took an antidepressant, like antipsychotic, nothing like that. Like I was able to manage, but there's a time and a place. Don't feel bad. If you got to take medication, take medication. Like I think it's, uh, Kanye's, I mean, uh, Kim Kardashian's boyfriend, Pete, whatever his name is. Like, he's like, take the medication. Like he's funny. He's just like, take the meds. He's like, they help you. Like if you need them, take them. Don't fucking feel bad about it. But there's other stuff you can do that can significantly offset the, you know, some of the downsides of taking medication or, or whatever. Um, okay. So medications out of the way. All right. So the thing that kind of blew my mind the most, um, during this whole journey is peptide therapy. Um, I'm sure you've seen me. I post about BBC. The group I run is all about peptides and hormones. Peptide therapy was just, you know, cause I had chronic gut issues on top of this. I had chronic leaky gut. Whereas like that contributed to the inflammation, the brain inflammation, like, you know, definitely definitely affected my mood and stuff and so i couldn't i couldn't address that with just diet supplements i saw naturopaths i saw functional like i've been seeing doctors the whole time like and people don't have the answer that's another part of this equation i'm gonna go on another side tangent is nobody could help me i've had to figure it all on my own i do believe there are good doctors there are people that can help you that know the answers and stuff but holy shit it is so hard to find them i worked with so many different people I had so many different diagnoses. Every psychiatrist I worked with told me I was bipolar. And I'm like, I know what bipolar is. Like I've read it. I'm like, I'm just, I don't, I don't ever not sleep. I don't go into like this manic state ever. I don't ever have long periods of major depressive disorder. Like, thank God. Like I feel terrible for people to do, but because my, because of my family history and because they hear I don't sleep, it was boom, you're bipolar. And I was like, I'm not bipolar. Like, I talked to my wife. I'm like, you think I'm bipolar? Like I'm, a little crazy, yes, but bipolar, no. And it's like, all they wanted to do was give me that shit. So long story short, I've had to figure this shit out on my own and it's fucking exhausting. I feel terrible for people that have to do it. And it's like, I like to research. I am I have an engineer kind of math weird mind where like I will rabbit hole on something like crazy. I will go so deep into something and I'll just love it. And that's what I've had to do with my health and it's probably saved my life. It saved me from being stuck on medications or, you know, 
God, I can't imagine if I actually did what everyone told me to do. It'd just be, it'd be a shit show, you know? Gut issues, they were telling me to take a PPI, a protein pump inhibitor, like all this stuff that was not addressing the root issue. My thing is, makes sense to me. Let's try to figure out the root in conventional medicine, psychiatry. They don't, they don't look at this. They don't have the tools. They don't know how to do it. Um, there are doctors that do. They're expensive. It's out of, out of pocket stuff. Good luck finding someone like that that goes through insurance. You know, that's a diamond in the rough. Um, but yes, side tangent done. So peptide therapy, a friend of mine I met in a biohacking group. This guy, Boris Yakubu, I probably butchered his name, but saved, probably saved my ass. Or, you know, he's the reason I'm making these videos because he kept telling me, he's like, look into this peptide BPC-157. Peptides all have these weird ass names. And BPC-157, so all peptides are found naturally in your body. These are compounds, they're bioidentical compounds. Like insulin is a peptide, so people that their bodies don't produce insulin, I, insulin is bioidentically produced and it serves that function in your body. Same thing with like bioidentical hormone replacement. People that don't produce testosterone or estrogen or whatever, you can get bioidenticals and it does the same thing in your body. Um, and so for me, once I learned about peptides, I was like, wow, I'm like, that's kind of like natural medicine. Like our body recognizes these things. It knows what it is. It knows how to function. So there's less likely to have, you know, all those, you know, synthetic molecule interactions and, and um, side effects where it's like, okay, if you introduce something your body doesn't understand and it's vast majority of, you know, pharmaceuticals are just, they're suppressing issues it's blocking a receptor, it's blocking this thing. It's not like, hey, it's going to the root of the issue and kind of fixing it. Whereas that's the difference with peptides. Peptides are, um, you know, like I said, they're natural, our body produces them and they have a very specific effect. They work, they have a very specific effect, but they're pleiotropic, meaning they work on, on new, all these different systems in the body. And when your body's stressed, inflammation, disease, all this stuff, those those peptides get depleted, everything gets, gets you know, used up all those resources. So by replacing, by using these peptides that we can study, that we know have, you know, a low risk profile for side effects that have a very, very specific effect. We, you know, obviously they, they research ones that find that are doing positive things. There's peptides that probably that do the things we don't want. We don't use those peptides, but this is stuff that's been researched for decades. You know, Russia has been using peptides you know, medicinally, therapeutically for years. Like we have, there's 80 FDA approved peptide drugs. So it's like this stuff isn't woo woo out there, freaking crazy, you know, I don't know, underground. This is stuff that's available that people have no idea exists. Um, and so I found out you can buy these things direct online. That's a whole nother story. You gotta know what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. Um, but so I did weeks of research. I do what I do. I researched like crazy. I figured out how to source the peptides. I had to use them. Um, you know, I talked to a bunch of people that had done them. I I went on Reddit. I went on YouTube like weeks, weeks figuring out how to do this safely. As because a lot of peptides you have to inject, just like insulin with with a subcutaneous needle. And I'm like, this shit's crazy. I'm like, I gotta inject this. But BPC one five seven, they see that it heals the gut lining. So it actually heals gut inflammation. Like there's, I don't know anything that does what BPC-157 does. I don't think there's anything in the world that comes close to it. It heals, it can heal traumatic brain injury, chronic inflammation, it heals organs. Like it sounds like snake oil. They're like, this shit doesn't exist. Well, I didn't believe it either, but I was like, you know what? I'm like, it can help with depression. Well, cause every, your neuro, a lot of neurotransmitters are produced in the gut. So that's not a stretch. Like, okay, if you heal the gut, your neurotransmitters, your brain are gonna work better. Um, And so I was like, all right, I'm like, I gotta try this shit. I'm like, I don't, I'm like, I'm tired of feeling like crap. I'm like, I need to try to recover. And it was like, this seemed like a low risk, high reward option. It was definitely far outside anything I tried, but I was like, I'm gonna try this shit. And needless to say, I tried it and it was like, man, it was like, cue the angels, like crazy shit. Where it was just like brain fog clearing out, mood was better. I was waking up with energy. Like there was just this honeymoon phase with it where I felt fantastic. Not to say the honeymoon phase wore out, um, but that kind of opened my eyes to this whole world of biologics and regenerative medicine and bioidenticals, like stuff that made so much more sense to me that I didn't even know existed. Um, works so much better than all the crap that these, you know, drug companies are kind of 
cook up because if you create something synthetic, you can patent it, it's yours, you can, you know, you own the rights, you can charge whatever. This stuff, you can't patent a lot of biologics because if it's current, it's if it occurs naturally in the body, you can't patent it. Like that's a lot with like natural. So they'll try to find like a synthetic version or a fragment and then you know tell you that the natural version's crap, but side tangent. Um but yeah, so peptide therapy is amazing. Like there's a, so many different peptides. There's a peptide for everything, for brain, for hair, for nails, for, you know, for cancer, literally like people there's, we've had really good feedback on them for people that have like Lyme disease, autoimmune, chronic inflammatory response syndrome, like really, really difficult, complex, chronic health issues that like wreck people's lives. Um, there's ones that, you know, can help with anxiety, depression, um, brain repair, which is like increasing BDNF, which is brain derived nootrophic factors. Um, you know, things that can like legitimately like repair, like kind of go at a root level, which that's where you want to go. You want to go to the root of the issue. Um, and identifying the root issues, that's a pain in the ass. I'm still working on how to figure out how to do that. There's a lot of factors in that. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so peptides, amazing. Look into peptide therapy, look into BPC, go down that rabbit hole. It is the holy grail, it's amazing. I get pumped up thinking about it. Um, the next one that helped me tremendously was uh, another bioidentical, which was hormone replacement. Um, I came across, when I started to learn about peptides, I heard I coming across a lot of guys in that community talking about testosterone replacement and hormone replacement, which is again, bioidentical. Um, so when I was 33, you know, I knew about this stuff. I had researched it. I did not want to go that route. I was like, I'm 33. Why the hell would I need testosterone placement? Um, but like I say, the more I talked about it year over year, I'm noticing that I'm losing muscle mass. My energy's down. Um, and I was wondering, I'm like, okay, could testosterone be a problem with this? And it's, it's not a stretch to say I did a lot of, I made a lot of the wrong choices. And so chronic inflammation, you know, high toxic overload, like, you're gonna wreck your hormone system. And that's what appeared I did. And I tried for years naturally to boost it and I couldn't. I know there's all these natural boosters and all this crap. I haven't seen anybody who can do it. Um, I understand why you don't wanna do testosterone placement if you're younger like me or even younger. But <laughs> like I said, I did the research. It looked perfect. It looked safe. Um, the research I know there's a lot of myths, same thing with the peptides, there's all these misconceptions and myths, but when we really dug into it, I was like, wow, I'm like, this is a viable option. So uh, yeah, I ended up going on testosterone replacement, you know, a year and a half, two years ago, another game changer, helped me tremendously, kind of took me to that next level, where it was just that little thing. Um, I've seen this before, people think hormone replacement, sometimes they go into it, think it's gonna fix everything. You know, testosterone replacement gets like glorified a little bit. It, it can be magic, it can be fantastic for someone, but you get what you get from it. You know, once your levels are optimized, once you're balanced, when you do that through the right clinic, um, you're gonna get what you get. If you're left, if you still have some anxiety, depression and shit, then that's still something you gotta deal with. Like you got, this is layer by layer. There's there's a lot of different systems, a lot, this stuff is complicated where it's like, don't expect one thing to fix everything. Um, and I've learned, I've been, I've been guilty of that all the entire time, trying to find that one magical thing and it's never there, it is up. It is doing all the little things. It's all the little pieces. It's it's you are a complex puzzle, and it's finding that stuff that fits for you that gets you to that next level. Um, so I'll plug I'll plug the clinic I work for just because I'm a shill. Um, so I work for a hormone replacement clinic that does everything telemedicine. We're U.S. based. I don't want to blab on about it, but it's easy. You know, we test. We can send people for blood work. Everything gets shipped from a compounded pharmacy. It's not, this isn't like some shady shit. Like that's everything goes legit. We also do peptide therapies and that's the end of that. Anybody's interested, let me know. Uh, I don't really care. Just kidding. I do care. Um, next thing, um, NAD plus nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. I can't believe I said it right. Um, another fantastic game changer, like miracle compound, top three, amazing thing. It's been used since the sixties to help rapidly detox people off of alcohol. Um, recently, it's been looked at for anti-aging benefits, for helping people get off heroin, drugs, opiates. Um, I think there's, now there's these oral precursors like NMN, NR that are being, that have taken over the market. So NAD plus is what's found in your body. It's different. It's not NNM, NMN and like NR, which at least look okay, but no one's, no one's saying profound stuff about this. NAD plus is, 
is profound. I'll try not to swear as much. Um, when I had to come off benzos, it was one of the most powerful tools by far. It saved my ass from feeling horrible. Uh, so NAD plus is a coenzyme that your entire body uses to produce energy and ATP. So it is crucial for your body. It literally makes, helps everything work better. You detox better. It can help repair neurotransmitters, dopamine, serotonin, you know, for people that have brain damage, chronic inflammation. Well, you got to watch out if you have autoimmune because it will spice up your histamine a little bit, but people have to have Lyme and these chronic, chronic fatigue issues. We're getting so much positive feedback on it. We're NAD plus it's blowing up on like kind of like the underground regen space. Um, there's clinics that are popping up all over the place in my area. They're charging stuff is expensive. That's what sucks about it. There's, I'm trying to find places that will accept insurance. It's tricky. Um, I don't want to, I'm going to make more videos on NED plus. I don't want to go off, but NED plus was amazing. It's helped me so much in my journey. Um, I need to speed this up. <laughs> uh, cerebral lysin, That is a Russian brain peptide for brain repair, for depression, for anxiety, for PTSD, anything that's brain damage related. It's, it's the most powerful thing I've found next to BPC, next to NED. It may be more powerful than those, but like that, those things are the fucking premier, like the best. Um, so cerebral license has been used in Russia for decades. Um, it was an approved, it's an approved medication. It's used in like Eastern Europe. Um, you can get, it's made by a pharmacy. You can buy it online. I'm not going to go into that. That that's a tricky part. There's a guy, Leo in longevity, who puts out fantastic, he's put out some awesome videos on cerebral lysin, really good content. Um, but yeah, cerebral lysin helped me so much. Like I'll try to describe for me. So the guy, Leo, he's really good to watch. He says it's almost like, um, like an anti, like the effects you get is like when you're on an antidepressant and it's working its best. And I'm not going to go into antidepressants because they don't work for everybody, but I've never taken antidepressants. So I don't know what that's like, but significantly stabilizes my mood. My brain works better. I actually took cerebral lysin yesterday. So maybe that's why I'm a, a spaz right now. Um, but it's a spaz in a good way. Like I feel like I have really good controlled focus, much better than normal. Um, but yeah, I'm a spaz. <laughs> oh God. Uh, okay. Cerebral lysin. Yeah. So significantly helped me with like anxiety. It definitely has a help. It helps with anxiety. It helps with depression, but it's just for me, it's the, it makes the most sense for like brain repair level because it's using actual brain growth factors. Um, nothing else does this. There's nothing else. that's the new nootrophic compound that has actual growth, brain growth factors in it. So it's like, it like treats like it's like this old medical concept or whatever, but it's for brain repair. Like it's fantastic. The, the literature, the research on what it can potentially do is, I mean, there's, there's bar none. Um, they've used it's Russia's crazy. They studied it on infants for kids with AS for, um, autism, ADHD, all these different conditions, human trials, ton of human trials on it. Um, the crazy part is it's, it's purified pig brains. There's um, a very specific process they use to purify it to make sure that there's not um, like a prion issue. You can look into prions or whatever. There's a bunch of paranoia about that. But this has been used for decades. Um, and like I said, I've, when you feel like crap, you go to extreme lengths. And I know what I'm saying sounds crazy and I probably come across as a little nuts. But I don't. I didn't have a choice. It was. It was take medication, and feel like crap, or take control of my health and try to do something. And for me, it's always been in the back of my mind where it's like I will take medication if I have to take medication to be there for my family, for my kids, whatever it takes. But I'm gonna exhaust every option before that. I'm gonna grind and bust my ass to not go that route because I don't believe it's the long term answer. At least for me. Um, like I said, don't feel bad if you got to take medication. There's a time and place. Um, okay. So cerebral license done. Um, next psychedelics. I'm gonna breeze through this one. All topics that I want to take a deep dive into this video is stupid long. I apologize. Um, so getting off benzos, horrible experience. I ended up doing ketamine infusions at a clinic I found locally to me. Uh, they use ketamine for PTSD, for anxiety, for depression, for mental disorders. Um, it's another one that shows profound benefit for brain healing, for neurogenesis, neuroplasticity, all these fancy words that just mean that you can, you can heal the brain. 
and you can kind of change, get out of these anxiety, depression patterns that your, your brain gets stuck in. Um, which when you're stuck in them, it feels like it's never going to end. And it's just like, it's freaking horrible. So I can't imagine being stuck like that all the time. And I did go up through a period of depression like that. It just feels like it's never going to end. And you're just like thinking the future and all you see is just, wow, I'm just going to be suffering forever. It's a terrible place to be. Um, like I said, I'm trying to speed up. So microdosing mushrooms. I did try that. I did like that. Um, another great thing for mindfulness for, um, it actually decreases blood flow to your default default mode network in your brain, which is just like autopilot, like the ruminations, the crap that's always running. Um, we're all kind of programmed by reach 30, 35. Like you just have these programs, like, you know, everything you've learned, whether it's through your, your, your family, your teacher's environment, like all that's just kind of, it just goes on autopilot. I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole either, but psychedelics are fantastic for kind of opening, you know, expanding your mind and um, helping you kind of see other possibilities in life. It's not like, I didn't, I didn't have super spirit. I'm not a super spiritual person. I'm not woo woo. Like I try to stick to logic and science. Um, so like I say, I'm trying not to sound too out there. Um, so sleep and anxiety, I've had horrible issues with insomnia. So the tools that have helped me the most. So ketamine shut down my, my fight or flight response. So when I came off benzos, it was a must because the fight or flight went crazy on me trying to come off clonopin. It was horrible. Um, so ketamine shuts the, it just shut that, shut that fight or flight response off. Like usually it'd be like at night, I'd be like, oh my God, what if I don't sleep? The same old bullshit thoughts that would trigger a physical response of fight or flight of fear. Um, ketamine shut that down. I didn't feel that. So eventually those thoughts stopped. And it was just like, okay, like whatever. Like, and that, and that helped me get relaxed enough to sleep. For me, not sleeping is always anxiety. It's usually anxiety related. Um, other great sleep tools, kava. It's a natural plant. Um, I'll do, I've done a lot of posts on kava. Um, Fasoracetam, that's actually a synthetic compound. It hits on GABA. Um, I haven't seen any, and people use it, I think, to reverse tolerance to like Fenibut, which is, I would never suggest Fenibut. Um, especially for anybody who's used a benzo, don't do that. That, that was a mistake, I did. Um, melatonin, uh, doctor told me 10, 15 milligrams of melatonin um, can definitely help with sleep. I know melatonin, everyone talks about melatonin, but higher doses, I would not do this daily. I would not make this consistent. Like I say, so here's the other thing. I cycle and rotate everything because I don't want to create any any tolerance problems like I did with benzos like alcohol. So if you take something daily, it's going you're going to it's going to eventually not work as good. Most stuff that our body even if our body produces it natural, you know, like testosterone plays. If we start taking testosterone, our body starts to downregulate its natural production. It's the same thing with a lot of these supplements. We're not necessarily down regulation, but they just don't work as good. So the effect isn't prominent and if it's like you just really got to know which supplements are beneficial to take long term and which ones are just going to slowly work work less and less. Where it's like a lot of people I see, they only have a few tools and they, they use them way too frequently and they stop working. So my idea is like, I'm gonna get a ton of tools and I'm gonna very carefully rotate them so that when I do use them, they are effective. And it's that system has been very effective for me. The downside of that is all the trial and error, all the money you gotta spend. Like I spent tens of thousands of, oh my God, so much money trying to figure out my weird brain and body. Um, okay. So that's, those are all the big, those are like the main supplements I love. Um, there's a ton more, there's a ton more, but those are like the heavy hitters. Um, I'm going to actually, I will wrap this up soon. Um, so best biohacks for me, grounding, being in the sun, vitamin D, UV exposure, mitigating blue light. Um, you know, I can't be on, I can't be on my phone for too long. Video games get me wired. I, mean, I love video games. It's just dopamine on on demand um another thing with add we're low and low in dopamine so i tend to have addictive personality where it's like i'll get locked if something's giving me dopamine i'll get locked into it um actually i have a cold i sound a little weird right now that's why um sauna so i have an infrared sauna i spent stupid money on one i'm not rich i financed the thing i'm still paying for it but it is fantastic got it when i feel like when i felt like crap um, mentally, physically, it helps so much to just sweat, to sweat like crazy. Um, like I said, even I notice it helps me with anxiety, depression. Like if I can't sleep in the middle of the night, I'll go in the sauna and like, I'll just roast, take a shower and it helps me just like, it just seems to kind of 
give me a little bit of a system reset. Um, make sure you take like a binder. I use like uh, activated charcoal, but I still need to work on my protocol with that. Um, cold therapy, Wim Hof stuff. Another one fantastic for, you know, people that are overly stressed, bad stress response, mental, mental health, self-discipline. Wim Hof stuff is awesome. I love that guy. Um, doing Wim Hof breathing is really cool. He's got videos all over YouTube. Um, you know, when I'm stressed or feel like crap, I'll do Wim Hof breathing and, you know, literally parked in a parking lot looking like weirdo. Um, um, mindfulness meditation, another huge one. You know, I started to meditate. I learned meditation when the insomnia thing hit. Probably same. It was why I was able to push so long is because I, I was meditating during the day. Like I was able to meditate out of, you know, I was able to get myself out of full blown panic attacks where it's just like panic attack. You feel like you're dying. You can't breathe. Um, and I'll elaborate. There's a couple meditations. There's one that I came across randomly. I've never heard talk about, but I, I was able to kind of shut. I was able to at least decrease the intensity of um, uh, like an anxiety attack significantly. I've never really come across anybody else talking about like the actual technique. Uh, I taught my wife, so I, um, she actually confirmed that I'm not crazy and that does it does actually help. Um, but sorry, there's shit flow in my face. Okay. So yeah, meditation, mindfulness, spiritual practices, whatever that is. I don't, I don't care what people, spiritual practice, I'm not, I enjoy hearing what everyone has ideas about life and you know, what happens when you die, all that stuff. Um, a few books, I'm going to finally wrap this thing, I swear to God. Um, so a really good book, letting, it's just called letting go. It's on Amazon. It's got like 5,000 reviews. Um, really simple technique that helps you kind of tune into emo your emotional state and gives you a way to not mentally, but just kind of a tool that helps you kind of decompress and just literally let go of that emotion, like let out that bad energy um, and not chase chase the thoughts, all the crap. Like when you feel like crap, your thoughts are crap. When you're angry, sometimes I just, I get mood swings with ADD or whatever, for whatever reason. And if I feel like crap, my thoughts are not crappy. My thoughts are not you know, are, will follow and I'll start blaming other things where it's like, you know, it's the traffic, it's this person, it's, you know, this situation. And it's like, when I really like can tune in and be like, do I just feel like crap right now? And now I'm projecting it out. And a lot of times I'm like, okay, this is me. This isn't everyone else. This is internal shit. So when you, when you really start to dial into that internal and you can work on your internal environment, you start blaming, you stop blaming external stuff that's when self growth really accelerates and I would I'm not an enlightened person like I just listen to really smart people and I've tried a lot of shit and I just I see if it works if it works great I don't care how crazy it sounds if it helps me and it it makes sense and fits then I'm I'm going to try it so yeah mindfulness meditation all that kind of stuff being able to separate yourself from your emotions and your thoughts and ego um that's a deep spiritual rabbit hole but it's a it's a really powerful one to go down and um, especially if you are dealing with a lot of mental pain or, or whatever. I mean, it's good for anybody. Anybody can benefit from that kind of stuff. But um, for me, it was like I had to I had to learn how to cope and endure these periods where I just felt terrible. Like I just had to build all these tools to help me. Um, another fantastic one I love is uh, Byron Katie. Her book is called Loving What Is. Uh, sounds woo-woo and hippie, but... Um, really great tech technique uh just this process of inquiry that she lays out she has kind of a wild story um but it's something i've read countless times and every time i read it it makes sense and i implement it for a little bit and then i forget it but it's like it's something that it's really helped me when i feel like crap when i feel like crap i go back to all the all the tools i've had and it's like the funny thing is like i'll start to feel good and i'll forget about all the all the work and all the stuff i've done and sometimes i'll go back to doing dumb shit and i'm finally at the point i'm kind of breaking that cycle um which is addiction and a whole nother topic um but like i said i love love her content she's helped me a lot kind of be able to um consciously tackle some of these these stories and these topics that are reoccurring for me which is a lot of stuff with like i just ruminated about finances money career what i should be doing i put a lot of a lot of stress and pressure on myself which is probably why i ended up with panic attacks and anxiety a lot of this was just bad mental program that for whatever reason, you know, got kind of drilled into me and I didn't realize it, you know, I'm not, wasn't consciously aware. Now that I'm aware of it, I'm working on, you know, it's like cognitive behavioral therapy. They do that a lot. I'm working on undoing some of those things where it's just like, if a thought process or a stressor, it's, if it's not 
serving me, if it's not doing me any good, then I'm better at letting it go. Where it's just like, there's no point. Like life is, you don't know when life is over. Like I've, I've almost died. So it's, it's just different for me now. Like almost dying kind of changes your perspective and feeling horrible. And then getting to a point now where I feel, I feel good. Um, obviously I don't, sometimes it doesn't, so it's still, there's still ebb and flow. It's not like I feel fantastic all the time, but I feel significantly better. Um, but like I said, those are all, those are all kind of the best tools I've, I've come across and YouTube, YouTube is, I mean, shit, the days I felt terrible. Luckily I have a job where I can just be by myself because there's days I didn't want to, I don't want to talk to anybody when I feel like crap. I don't want to be around people because it takes a lot of energy to fake feeling, you know, to fake like you feel good or fake that you're just like not struggling. And at the same time, I don't want to have that conversation. I don't want to advertise that I'm struggling and be like, cause I know people mean well, like they want to help. And it's like, I know uh, it's like as a family member, like I didn't, when my mom had bipolar, like I didn't understand her struggle. Like I wasn't like, I just was so wrapped up in my own world when I was young. I just didn't, I couldn't empathize. Like I just didn't understand. It was just frustrating for me then. It was very frustrating, you know, why she struggled and why she, the way she was. Um, nothing against my mom. She was a, you know, she was a fantastic person. No, she did pass away, but you know, she did her best. And now that I had my own mental struggles, I'm like, God, I'm like, I can't imagine like how horrible it is for bipolar and like all these people struggle. And that's, that's also why I'm making these, this video. And you know, um, obviously I don't, I'm not super keen to talk about my struggles, but I'm at the point now I don't really give a shit what people think about me so much anymore. Um, and there's no point of hiding this. Like I have these struggles. I know other people do. I've talked to a lot of people that you'd have no idea are struggling in silence. And it's like, that sucks. And it's like, that's what I did. And it was like, I went to such a bad place mentally where it's like, fuck, if I can, if I can put out a couple of videos that click with someone that help them not go down as deep as I did, um, then it was worth it. You know, and it's just like end of the day, I don't, don't really know when the ride's over. Uh, so yeah, YouTube's fantastic. Find people that are positive, positive influences. There's great, so many great Facebook groups. And it's just like, don't listen to the haters. Don't get, I mean, I get caught up in some of these arguments sometimes online. It's like, I'm at the point now where it's like, I'm getting better of just, you know, listening to people and accepting like, stop trying to change people. I'm not going to change people. Like you can have your opinions and ideas. And it's like, I'll respect that. Like we see differently. It's like, I don't need to, it's like, I'm trying to get rid of the ego where it's like, I'm right. You're wrong. It's just, it's just pointless, stupid. Like the people that resonate with me are going to resonate and you know, we can disagree. It's like, I want to, the people I want to communicate with are ones that like, we can respectfully disagree. Like it doesn't need to be personal. And like, that's, that's obviously something I'm working on. Um, cause I have to put out this content. People are probably be like, you're a dumbass. I'm like, all right, like I'm just going to get used to it. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's nothing like that. Like I said, YouTube, YouTube, Facebook groups. Um, there's so many, so many great people that have helped me along my way. Um, and yeah, like that support, meeting other people that you connect with that struggle, that have the same struggle, but are like, fuck this, I'm gonna do what it takes. You know, I'm gonna, I'm going to, you know, I'm gonna leave no stone unturned. Like I'm gonna do anything and everything to improve the situation. And it's like, that's kind of where I'm at, where it's just like, I'm gonna give this my all. And if it doesn't work out, if I'm like, I got to take medication, then it is what it is. I'm going to accept it. And at least I know I've done everything possible. Um, and I'm just a stubborn bastard. So I just, I'll never really give up. Um, but like I said, I did, I broke one time. So, um, I just know how bad that feels when it's like you lose hope. Like, God, it's such a, it's a terrible place to be. And I know that people get there and it's just like, the best thing I can tell you is it's like, you just got to keep trying stuff. You just can't, you know, I had, I had lists in my phone where it's just like, okay, this didn't work. Cross that one off. Let me try this. If this doesn't work and always having a backup plan, literally I created just this huge safety net. Cause I never wanted to get the, get to a place where I'm like, you know, suicidal or whatever. Like, sorry to, even, I know it's triggering for some people, but, um, I just wanted to make sure that, and it made me feel it helped my anxiety levels. Like, okay, if this doesn't work, I got this and this. And it's like, that's where bottom level is medication where it's like all else fails. I'll take the medication. Like worst case scenario, I'll go to the hospital. Like I can't leave my kids. I can't, and I can't go out like that. Like that's just not how I want my, you know, if I can just, you know, just keep finding tools to endure. Unfortunately, some of us endure life, but I believe that, you know, there's stuff that you can get back to at least significantly improve your situation. Um, 
and like me, like I'm at a point where I'm very happy in life. I'm grateful to be here. It's like, I didn't know if I'd ever get, get back there. And that is a long ass video, but that's my legacy. Just in case. All right. If you made this far, God bless.